Hello all, Rick here with another Index video looking at the Star Trek species, the Benzites. This species is relatively new to the scene, appearing in the 24th century, but they were a known power before that. During the 23rd century, they had limited contact with the Federation, but trade tithes with the Klingon Empire. As time moved on and the Klingon Federation hostilities eased, contact with the Benzites gradually increased until it hit a tipping point around 2360s, when their involvement with the UFP seemingly increased out of nowhere. They began signing numerous treaties with the Federation, remaining a non-aligned world, until eventually joining. In 2364, the first Benzite joined Starfleet and did incredibly well, bearing many hallmarks for his culture and serving as a credit to both Benzar and Starfleet. Throughout the next few years, officer exchange programs took place and several more Benzites joined Starfleet until 2373. However, their Federation membership came at a rapid cost to them. The Dominion War had led to the capture of Benzar early in 2374. However, the Romulan Star Empire then managed to liberate it from enemy forces. There were some concerns about the Star Empire's potential reluctance to let Benzar go again, but it was a Federation world, so maintaining a hold on it would have been endangering the political alliances made during the war. The home planet is, as mentioned, called Benzar, but also Faradon, and located in the Delta Pavonis system. The planet had three moons, Herty, Dwara, and B93, and was considered an M-class world. However, like the Barzan people, the planet's atmosphere contained trace elements of other gases that the Benzites had evolved to be reliant on, while other species may struggle. The planet was mostly a series of small continents spread over connected seas, featuring polar ice caps, and the gravity was 1.3 g. Biologically, Benzites were easily identifiable among other humanoid species. They tend to stand slightly shorter than average, being from a higher gravity world, and their skin often has a bluish-green tint with sheens to it and mottling or orange-brown highlights. Although pigmentation could vary along this spectrum and can be darker or paler, even extending into a silvery colour, but most had a mixture of these shades. They have two opposable thumbs on each hand, and a harder carapace-like structure over the top of their skull, giving them their distinctive look. From the mouth hang barbells, that they refer to as whiskers, which suggests an evolutionary origin from a sea creature. As on Earth, barbells are used as a taste sensor to help detect nearby food and guide a fish to it in murky waters. This may not be the case anymore with benzites, but they are likely an evolutionary remnant. When off-world, a benzite can breathe and survive in a standard M-class atmosphere, but they need a breathing device to add the mixture of vapours that they are used to, to avoid difficulties. They have gone for a different approach than the Barzan, who attach their breathers to their face directly, and instead opt to simply wear one positioned below the face. Whatever chemicals it produces are clearly not a concern for most other humanoids though, or less pervasive methods of air filtration would be used, one that did not risk others breathing it in. Their blood is orange in colour, however, and mercury platinum based, so clearly they have a very different physiology. There was also another trait of their bodies, in that organ replacement had a very low chance of being successful for some reason, which is unfortunate. Another quirk of their biology is that benzites that are from the same geostructure, sort of the very extended family, often looked remarkably similar. The differences were there, but most of the time only a benzite could spot the difference, something they have been very understanding about. A geostructure is defined as a dome or similar geological structure, and to use this term in relation to familial connection seems odd. It could be a quirk of translation, or it could also be that benzite families do not stray far from a geographical point of origin, and that location plays a vital role in their birth, perhaps akin to a familial nursery. They are described as cities carved into geodes and crystalline deposits in non-canon sources. Benzites were known to be thorough and diligent by reputation, 
In fact, it was part of their training in most vocations to not only unearth problems but also devise a solution for it before presenting findings. This tends to have them work alone as they seek to claim the credit and recognition for their efforts, which also makes them seem eager to please. This can come off as prideful and arrogant at times as they seek praise for going the extra mile, as it were, uh, potentially at the expense of teamwork. The origin of this mentality was a philosopher and statesman named Andragov, who in pre-warp time had insisted that efficiency and success were the most important aspects to measure a person's value. This was known as the doctrine of Andragov and became the overriding factor in Benzite culture. It did see their society flourish as advancement was rewarded, however there was a much harsher side to it as every citizen was effectively measured and valued based on their contribution. During the darkest periods of this doctrine, the lowest scoring among them were expected to die if they were considered irredeemable failures. There is much talk in the licensed material about the Benzites being the product of extensive genetic engineering, but this is not mentioned in canon at all, nor really hinted at. The only references to this detail I could find were from RPG modules, but it states that the reason for Benzites' close resemblance is that they were a species evolved by another race of forebears that attempted to settle Benzar. They did not, however they managed to create a species that could survive there, but died out or left before the Benzite genome was completed. This led to flaws in Benzite genetics, flaws that the Benzites themselves would correct at childbirth when they developed their own genetic resequencing technology using the gear left to them. These flaws are corrected, allowing for them to develop into healthy adults. This high level of genetic engineering, however, would place them at odds with the UFP's laws. But it is said that because they actually need the technology to actually survive as a species and repair the unfinished damage, it is permitted. However, there is also a time in their history where they did struggle with genetic augmentation, when they were afflicted with the disease that broke down their organs. They eventually turned to raiding each other's geostructures for replacement organs, as in victims, which then led to further genetic modification to produce better warriors. This was the reason given for the harsh doctrine of Andragov as a regulation and replacement for violent conflict, and the genetic addition of low organ transfer success rates, all in an effort to stave off open warfare. The Benzites are a very achievement-driven species that focus hard on personal development and a success in a metric that they judge with cold calculus. Their drive may make them seem arrogant at times or even selfish, but it is how their society develops and if they are indeed a product of artificial growth, well then they are truly beings of scientific pursuit, so perhaps that drive to achieve begins with their progeny. Thank you for watching this video on the Benzites of Star Trek, a species that does not get much attention on screen, but rather a lot in other media, giving them a very detailed background in genetics. The next choices for the Index I thought could be a good choice between The Expanse's Martian Congressional Republic, or switching to the Star Wars universe for a look at the Geonosians and their lore. Thanks for watching again, and I'll see you next time for another video. I've been Rick, goodbye.